Manatee High Ski Club is, is a large club. Uh, this year we're around 140 members and generally it's about that number. Uh, so to, to have that many students, you have to really break things down. And uh, you know, we have assigned coordinators to each of the projects and they're responsible to make those projects happen. The Extreme Key Over was just uh, one of the most amazing things I've ever done. Um, this was our single service project this year uh, where a family was identified in, a, in an area of town that uh, you know, needed some, some help and, and needed some work. And uh, we came in with just uh, an unbelievable amount of support from our community. Uh, we're able to come in and completely gut the, the house that they were living in, um, just, just, just to a, a bare structure, uh, completely redo it and, and turn the keys back over to them with no charge. Our, our officers, when they come in, we always you know, try to encourage them to dream big and to, to shoot high. Um, the particular group that came in, they really you know, kind of thought about and tossed around a lot of ideas. And in a board meeting one night, they came and said, you know, this is what we'd like to do. We'd like to go out, we'd like to identify a very needy family in a very needy community. And we'd like to do an extreme home makeover modeled after the, the TV show. And I, I can tell you that I was a little skeptical uh, at first, and I said, it's a great idea, um, but do you, do you understand what you're, 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 you're going to take on? You want to you know, you go out to, into the community in a very difficult economy and ask people in an industry that's been hit particularly hard, especially here in Florida, and we want to ask them to donate their time, uh, labor, money, uh, things like that to, to be able to do this, this uh, project. And frankly, I was, like I said, I was skeptical. Uh, right up until the point where we, where we really started to communicate with that industry and talk to people. And we finally, you know, communicated with a very large, influential contractor here in town that, that jumped right on board and said that they would be happy to be um, our general contractor on the job. And once they did, uh, the, the asks went out to the subcontractors and to the um, trades people and to the material people and everything else. And there wasn't anybody that we, we asked that didn't come on board. Well, it, the impact is, is widespread. Obviously, um, you know, from what the family was living in to what they're living in now is, is just a huge difference. Um, you know, certainly you know, improves the quality of their life. Um, as we were doing the project, it was really neat because you would see um, people from the neighborhood coming and help. So we're, the neighborhood's going, and you'd see people um, in neighboring houses starting to clean up their own yards. Um, so you, just even while we were doing the project, you could see um, you know, the influence of what our kids were doing spreading uh, throughout that whole neighborhood. Well, the Chow Now program that we worked on today is a project we started during my freshman year. And what we do for that is with the help of community and our club's members, we collect um, food items and monetary donations to, um, to get the food. And then every Wednesday after school, our club members help pack up the food and then we take it over to a local elementary school. Chow Now stands for Children Hungry on Weekends, Not on Our Watch. So, so they put together this, uh, this system and went to the administration of the other school, the elementary school uh, that we work with, and they you know, basically came up with a plan to help feed those kids uh, on the weekend. A past uh, faculty advisor um, made us aware of the need at, at an elementary school uh, locally for the students um, that are on free and reduced lunch and breakfast at school may not have all the food um, that they should over the weekends. And so the project came from, from that start. We pack uh, 60 bags every week. Um, it just made me realize that there are a lot of kids out there um, that don't have food over the weekend. I couldn't imagine myself not eating on the weekend. And it just really like made me think how many kids out there, and like not even just like in America, but all around the world like that. This is, I think, our third or fourth year doing it um, with our school. And uh, since then, there are seven other schools in Florida that are doing it. Um, and a, an adult organization in Bradenton started one this year. Uh, so it's exciting to see the growth. I think there's um, several lessons that I've learned since I've been involved with this project. Um, when I first took it over, I was the first coordinator of this project, and I got involved because I wanted to have more of a leadership role in the club. And since then, I've passed down the coordinating position to um, other members in our club. And it's really um, shown me how the community can um, come together to give to other kids that are needy. And it can also see um, how kids in our club can step up and hold leadership positions. 
the recycling program that we do, um, it's called the Green Team. What we do is we give bins out to all the teachers around school so um, during classes when kids throw papers out instead of just throwing it away they can put it in these green bins. And then every Monday after school our green team goes around the school and picks up these bins and takes them to the recycling dumpsters around our school so we can recycle bottles and paper instead of just throwing them away. The green team was our um, Florida District Governor's theme several years ago um, and uh, following the Governor's theme uh, we started the, um, the recycling here on campus. A lot more people have started to attend and a lot more teachers are starting to kind of get in the habit of putting their recycling out and separating recycling for us. So it's definitely grown from a few teachers to now most of the school doing it. The administration is really helpful. They, if we ever need an email sent out, they can help us out with that. They alert the teachers to the day changes in Green Team. And they've just been supportive in our recycling. Um, I think this project benefits our environment because it's not only spreading awareness to our school to show, I mean, the, just seeing the green bins, I think, makes people think, oh, I'm going to throw my trash in here instead of just throwing away in a regular trash can. And I think it just benefits our community because recycling is a good thing. It's definitely making a difference. Green Team is just all about helping the environment and recycling, saving trees. Being the faculty advisor has made a, a big impact on me. Um, personally, just my own growth. Um, you know, I really believe that, that, that I'm blessed. And, to be able to give a, an opportunity to give back to the community, uh, this is kind of the vehicle for that. Uh, I've had two of my own sons come to the club and, and the, the lessons that they've learned from it and the things that they've done uh, once they've left the club, um, I think, you know, it's just made a huge impact. You know, I, I've learned from the, the uh, students as a, Kiwan, as a Kiwanian that, um, uh, you know, tenacity is a good thing. Um, that, that, that keeping after something and, and continuing to pursue it, um, regardless of what other people say and regardless of what really happens, um, you know, going down that road, that, that you need to keep pushing forward. You need to keep, you know, after things that, that a lot of people say that you, that you can't do. And, um, you know, they have taught me many, many times over that, um, you know, that would, which you don't think is possible is absolutely possible.